Welcome back to Hoops HD, everybody, Woo-hoo! and happy Valentine's Day. It is oh, Wednesday, yes. February 14th. Uh, Valentine's Chad Day, Sherwood. my calendar says Ash Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, uh, It's also so Pictures and Catchers on. Reporting Day, the best uh, wow. best day in, in the baseball season. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, well, like I got a really nice frozen pizza for, for me and my girlfriend so we could watch the Detroit IUPUI game together. And, and she started crying and, and gave me a plant and said something like, that's for all the oxygen you've been wasting. And uh, she stormed out. But Detroit won, so it was a pretty good night. Uh, wait, well, Griggs, I thought she stormed out because she found your Valentine's and you left for Tim Miles. Yeah, that too. <laughs> all right. Um, what are we doing here? Under the Radar Podcast. I'm your host, <laughs> That's yeah, I'm David sure. Corbin. That's David Griggs over there. That's John Sleek over there. Who, who, what are we doing here? Um, what the heck is Under the Radar? Griggs, go, go ahead. Tell us what Under the Radar is. Well, in layman's terms, it's the 22 regular one-bid leagues. There's no rule that says those leagues only get one. In fact, there's a few every year, including this year, that we think can get more than one. We'll talk about that as we get into the show, but that's what under the radar is. So it's not the power five conferences, which is the big 10, big 12, Pac 12 for one more year. Anyway, SEC and ACC, nor is it the five other regular multi-bid leagues, which is the big East, of course, uh, the West coast, albeit maybe not this year, the Atlantic 10, the American and the mountain West, which is might send six or seven this year. It's the twenty-two uh, on yeah. It's 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 those, everybody else. We have one other disqual. One other qualifier, I guess. To that is that any team that is in the top twenty-five out of the major polls, that individual team we consider to not be under the radar. And in all the years we've been doing this, it's happened <laughs> quite a few times. I've had teams that we have, in fact, happened a lot earlier this year with James Madison. Uh, in all those years we've been doing this, though, I have never, <laughs> to my best of my recollection, seen a team for these under the radar polls break into the top 25 and before we can do our first under the radar podcast, literally two days later, lose a game that they really should have won. Really? Uh, at, ho- won. at home. At, at home. home to a bad team. Indiana State, congratulations. You're in the top 25 on Monday for the first time in 40 plus years. And Tuesday, you go out and you lose at home to Illinois State. <laughs> Oh. Well, this could have been a plot just to be mentioned on all three podcasts this week, which is not easy to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that really is hard. <laughs> we actually, there was an executive decision made here at Hoops HD. We have we are keeping Indiana State under the radar despite their top 25 ranking. Uh, welcome back, Indiana State. You were out of under the radar for about 24 hours, if that. Yeah. Um, but we're not going to start with the Missouri Valley. We're going to start with a feature conference and Conference we have not featured surprisingly all year and had a very, very good week uh, this week. Uh, I thought we'd maybe start things off in the Sun Belt, which played the back half of the Sun Belt Mac Challenge. 12 games against the Mac, 10 and 2 this week ended in those 12 games, and both wow. losses were one point losses. Uh, great weekend for the Sun Belt Conference uh, as a whole, mm. and particularly Appalachian State and James Madison, the two best teams here. Yeah, it, it it really was. Uh, JMU with a with a really nice win over Akron, albeit home, a pretty good Akron team. And when you look at App State and James Madison, and I think that if there's going to be anybody that makes a run at the bubble or gets inside of it, it it's these two. Um, you know, Dorman of, of all those that that guess the the actual committee, you're probably the best out at best at it out of all of us. Um, w- When you look at these profiles, yeah, there's some things that smell bad. That loss at Northern Illinois back on Nigel Tufnell Day, 11-11, really is weighing App State down. But they have the home win against Auburn. They have the win at JMU. They swept them. And when you look at JMU, uh, you know, I don't think the loss at Southern Miss, despite being a 2-11 net, is that bad of a loss because they're not that bad at home. What about these profiles? And I think – Either one of them could be dangerous if they get to the round of 64, but say one or both of them lose in the conference tournament, would the committee look at them and would they take them? And, you know, who looks a little better? It's a great question, uh, Griggs. I think the best way for the Sun Belt to get both these two teams in 
would James Madison would beat App State in the finals. And I say that because then App State is on the outside looking in and people can say, well, they beat James Madison twice. They swept them in the regular season. So if the Sun Belt to get the get two in, I think their best route is Madison wins the auto bid, App State loses in the finals. I agree with you. The Northern Illinois loss in tier four is really stinging and it sits out. But Auburn is really coming on, and uh, that win is is going to mean a lot. I really believe that. Um, they've been really good in the tier two and the tier three. Um, I would have liked to see them beat Oregon State or Texas State, but if they can run the table or only lose one here, uh, App State, I think they will be in the discussion. Yeah, I definitely think they're in the discussion. Uh, it's, uh, it's, kind really the, it's kind of the same same picture for James Madison because I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, if James Madison wins every game until they play App State for a third time in the conference tournament final and loses that, they will have lost to two yeah. teams all season. One of them three times, but only have lost to two teams all season, and, including the win at Michigan State. Uh, so I, I think there's an interesting argument for JMU should that happen also, though. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And um... – you know, again, the 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 other game, the other team that they did lose at Southern Miss, I, I don't think I don't want to say that it's good or that you can just sort of ignore it. It's certainly not a tier one loss, but it may not be as bad as the net indicates uh, on the App State side, Northern Illinois and Texas State. Yeah, those are both. Uh, I'll tell you, there, there are <laughs> there are a couple numbers on the screen that really do hurt at the end of the day. They look at these strength of schedules and these non-conference strength of schedules. They are very poor for both these teams. And if you are yeah. suddenly comparing the one or both of these teams to the bottom of the bubble, this could be an issue. It, it, it certainly would be. And we've seen teams left out before, and that was the stated reason. Um you know, when they ask the committee, it's just like, well, there's their out of conference strength of schedule just wasn't good enough. Uh, well, so you got, can blame Purdue yeah. from last year. They just wanted to make sure they were prepared to face a tier four team in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> Stalika, I pulled up the rest of the standings in this, in this league here. And, you know, I mean, we do have Troy there actually tied with App State. James Mass is down in third. Louisiana, a couple of teams tied with Southern Miss and Marshall. That This is not going to necessarily be a just like let's just put App State and James Madison in the conference tournament final of this conference by any means, is it? Well, it's significant in that let's suppose App State gets the uh, number one seed. Then you're looking at a potential Troy James Madison semifinal, assuming there's no uh, shenanigans below that. Now, App State and Southern Miss would also be a potential semifinal matchup. Or that Louisiana team. Let's not forget that Louisiana team is might be really be the third best team in the conference, quite frankly. Yeah, that's a live wire team. And that, that is a team that can cause some damage. And Louisiana does still have a game left against App State. It's at App State, but, uh, you know, that's, yeah. that is – when you look at the remaining schedules here, James Madison, four road games left, all winnable. A App State four, their last six are at home. But that I think I'm looking at that Louisiana game is almost the one game to circle for both these teams here. Yeah, uh, the rest of the way. Yeah, it is. And, and and again, like the they're good. They can play. And I think uh, in about a week's time, we also have to ask: Can Marshall potentially knock off either App State or James Madison at home? Well, Marshall's at App State come here tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night. Uh, and then James Mass is at Marshall next Wednesday. So Marshall could could factor into this whole race as well here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there are there are the games for this week in this conference. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I, I think and this is a full 14-team conference tournament also. It's a <laughs> yeah. huge conference yeah. tournament. Uh, and it could be a ton of fun. Oh, uh, it should be, yeah. Is it straight-up seating or yes. is it a ladder yes. format? Oh, it well, is. Well, okay, well, so we well, get – JMU well, the, the, one through, opening well, the one right. through the one through four is get uh the buys to the oh quarters. okay so it's yeah. not okay yeah, there, there is I, there is yeah. a play in round between teams 11 12 13 and 14 and okay. then and then you go straight seating after that so uh, kind of a semi ladder the same format that the big 10 currently uses that the SEC yeah. currently uses that same okay, format yeah. uh, let's jump back to the rest of the leagues here Dorman, let me start things off with you here in the America East, where uh, this was oh, the boy. week for the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Maybe I should go to Sleeka because he's got the shit. <laughs> yes, Sleeka. We're in the gear. 
Once the team of the people, always the team of the people. In this case, this would be the original team of the people. Check out our tab sometime. But yes, Vermont had the longest winning streak in conference play, but NJIT put an abrupt end to that last Thursday night. And just a show that was not a fluke, they also beat then second place UMass Lowell on Saturday night. So Um, this was huge for the Highlanders in that they were – slated to not even qualify for the America East tournament, and now they're a game ahead of UMBC. Oh, this is almost beyond belief. I, I just don't even uh, talk about surprises. I mean, th- the fact that they got both of them after looking so, like such hot garbage prior to that. They still have the worst the night. They still have the worst night in the conference, <laughs> if you look at it that way. <laughs> after That's those crazy. two wins. Uh, not quite the worst J and G. The J and G rankings, uh, they they are they are a little bit ahead of, it, of UMBC now. But uh, it has, uh, you know, maybe Dorman also this this did a little bit open the door for Bryant still to shot that regular season title uh, because they at least Bryant at least had the two and a week. Yes, they did, and it keeps it keeps Bryant right in the thick of things. Vermont gets that win against NJIT, and I really think it's game. Uh, I think it's uh, game over. I think America. I think Vermont runs away with this. But uh, like uh, Stalika told us, they didn't. So Vermont only sits a game ahead of of, of Bryant and two ahead of, of Lowell. I also believe Bryant has two more shots at UMass Lowell. If I if my uh, memory serves me. So that's going to come down to who wins those two games. Obviously, one on each home floor, but uh, Lowell and Bryant will decide the second seed there uh, for themselves and uh, get to, st- you know, uh, stay away. The 2 3 seed uh, obviously gets to stay away from Vermont until the final. But yeah, uh, uh, it, yeah. incredible. Yeah, Lowell, Br- Lowell and Bryant play the, for the first time here on Saturday. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure exactly how all the tiebreakers work, but let me quickly pull up Bryant's remaining schedule here. Should Bryant sweep this week, Maine and, and Lowell, sw- sweep Lowell, win the, beat them twice, and win at Vermont, uh, they would remain. They would finish tied with Vermont for the league for the conference lead. And if it's like a lot of conferences do, which is your record versus second place team, third place team, yeah. etc., because. Vermont lost to NJIT. Bryant may take the, may take the tiebreaker here, uh, but they uh, wouldn't they have lost tied. to the second place team. Correct. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I I, th- I think that, I think that that Bryant still has a shot at the tiebreaker. Here. That's oh, they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they obviously, if they win at Vermont in, in a couple of weeks, still, yeah, um, yeah, a big week for Maine as well. They're at Bryant, and then they're hosting Vermont, and we know we've been f- championing this Maine cause yeah. to make that America East eight this year. Yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> always tough for Vermont to make the top eight of the nine team conference. <laughs> I'm, I always say for Maine to make the top eight of the nine team conference. Yeah. Sort of a log jam here at the bottom of the league. UMBC, mm-hmm. although being a game out is like being five games out <laughs> almost, but uh, you, you know, just a game behind, at least in the win column, behind fifth place. Right, let's let's keep things rolling here before we slow down too too much and go jump over to the A Sun Conference, uh, where Stalika, Eastern Kentucky, uh, they had a huge non-conference win tonight over Chicago State, uh, but but before that they did lose a game at Stetson over the weekend to let the Hatters suddenly into the conference race. Well, for one thing, this was a road game at Stetson, so not terribly surprising. However, it was also a missed opportunity for the colonels here to effectively lock the door on the regular season race so now not only do you have a single game lead over stetson you now have a two game lead over lipscomb who's also catching up well i would say i would say you could say well it was only it was it was a road game at stetson but griggs it was against stetson yeah (laughs) um Um, a team we have not discussed all season as far as i can recall right and now here they are at the doorstep of first place um so so getting into the mix you you know while it was a home win they did beat eastern kentucky eastern kentucky i don't want to say that they're out of the race they're still in first place but um you, you know they haven't been they went from I think winning eight of their, you know, their first eight conference games and most of those by double digits to suddenly losing two of three, if I, if I remember correctly, Um, there's another team. And I I think that it was always the team that we sort of felt had the best pieces and the most talent has Lipscomb finally started to put it together. And in a tournament setting, are they the best team? 
And, and I kind of think that they may be. I, I don't deny that. I was actually starting to really get into this North Florida team. They had a horrible week, homelessness to North Alabama, followed up by homelessness to Central Arkansas. So uh, they did bounce back with a road win at Queens tonight before we started. But uh, yeah. I, th I think you're right. It might be Lipscomb. In fact, let's take a quick look at the upcoming schedule here. Uh, Lipscomb, uh, tomorrow night, they're going to be at North Alabama. Meanwhile, Eastern Kentucky's game is at Bellarmine on Saturday. So that's a few uh, games. Yeah. Uh, Stetson's got a big uh, cross-state rivalry there. They're hosting Florida Gulf Coast. Ooh, that one's going to be riled. <laughs> uh, I know our friend Rocco Miller is stuck in the Orlando airport earlier today. Maybe he right. can continue to hang around until Saturday and go to the Stetson game. Yeah, he, he can't get his private jet out of the Orlando airport <laughs> to, get, to, to get to any of the games tonight. Uh, what are we up to here? Dorman, you want, to, you want to take the big Sky Conference for us? We're another good week by Eastern Washington. Yeah, Eastern Washington really pulling away, uh, really flexing their muscle. Uh, I think the strongest team in the conference. I think the team to beat not only in the regular season, but come, come conference tournament time. Uh, they'll get the – if they get the one seed, they'll play the winner of the 9-10 game. I think that should be a, a pretty good uh, draw for them. But I think they're the strongest. I think they're the, the most – the best coached. Uh, and they play great basketball. I love the way they move the ball and play team ball. So I think this is Eastern Washington's conference in the regular season. I think they do the double and go to the tournament. I, I agree. The, I mean, Weber State, you don't want to completely overlook them. I mean, we, we yeah. remember what they did out of conference, but Eastern Washington's just been the most consistently good team, at least since conference play started. Yeah, I don't overlook Montana either, but uh, this week, Eastern Washington's a pair of home games, including against that Weber State team you just mentioned. So yeah. uh, th that could, you know, well, okay, I know Northern Colorado's technically in second place here, so it doesn't do anything in terms of locking up the conference, but uh, just puts more distance between them and, and the team like Weber State. Uh, of course, you, you push Weber State down to the four or the five spot, you may have to play them in the, in the semifinals, not <laughs> right, the finals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one thing I will say, I agree with uh, Griggs there. When you have the best team, when you have the best player on the floor, which Weber State will do with Dylan Jones in the tournament, you always have a chance in these in these under the radar conference tournament games. Dylan Jones is an absolute stud and can catch fire at any point. So I I agree with Griggs. Always keep your eye out on Weber State. I agree completely. Also, Stalika over in the Big South Conference. Oh, what we night. suddenly have a story <laughs> after tonight where High Point, who had been running away with this oh, conference, we've been praising them goodness. for weeks. Plays upstate, you know, two ninety nine <laughs> net upstate at home, and while they found a way to force overtime, they could not even pull it out in overtime, and they lose eighty six eighty one. Fortunately, this is no longer the days where the Big South had uh, home courts going through the uh, championship game. So, and under normal circumstances, that would have been pretty devastating. However, since they now play at the Classic Bajangles Coliseum in Charlotte, not quite as big of a deal for the Panthers. However, UNC Asheville suddenly gets another life, even after they themselves held on to beat Presby at home tonight. Yeah, they yeah, they, they really struggled in that game tonight, too, against a not-that-great Presbyterian team. Go ahead, Griggs. Well, I was, yeah, I, mean, I was just going to echo the point you just made. I, I, I mean, it was just kind of shocking because High Point and Nashville have looked heads and tails better than everybody else in this conference in the night, both sweating against some of the teams that have looked among the worst in the league. <laughs> and, 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 you know, high point struggling and losing at home. It's just, I, I, I don't know. Is, is, is it just too much, too much Mardi Gras hangover or something? I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, you it's know, what, top, yeah, yeah. I, 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 on top of that, I mean, but even the other teams here, Gardner Webb just lost a home game to high point over the weekend. It was not the same high point team that was playing so well. And Winthrop lost to the last place team over the weekend, <sighs> weekend on Saturday when, when they, when they, when they played at Longwood, um, and well, we all know what that game was about. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Longwood Lancers, Winwood Cup champions. Wow! And our congratulations to it. them. Yeah, this round of it. So <laughs> maybe we oh. can get them again in the conference tournament. It, maybe I mean that's what we're all hoping for. And and nothing, Winwood nothing Cup. beat the year they played for the Big South title, though. Yes, it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Salika, uh, oh, quickly, here's the upcoming schedule here. Uh, Win- Winthrop at Radford. Oh, that's, that game was, it's on the schedule there. It's been played tonight. It's actually tomorrow night's game. That's uh, That game was moved over to ESPNU. But uh, High Point is hosting Radford on Saturday, while Asheville is hosting Southern and then going to Longwood. Uh, but uh, Salika, over in the Big West Conference. Can't imagine uh, why you're going to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> the well, it, it was it was a bit, it was oh, okay. a bit of an emotion it was a bit of an emotional week for a uh, uc uh, irvine i mean yeah. yeah we mentioned the gouch eater cup last <laughs> week quite a bit out of them after getting the win at uc santa barbara and they had nothing left for the uh, river vine cup oh. on the road and yeah. they lose a surprising one that allows uc davis to uh edge a little bit cl- well I would say edge a little bit closer, uh, except but... Davis lost at Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. uh, and UC San Diego, well, they also lost at Hawaii. So this was a bad I, – I, we mentioned last week, in fact, that that this that these Hawaii roachers for the second and third place team is always tough, and both yeah. teams went there and lost. Uh, Griggs, go ahead. Yeah, they are. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, just I was just parroting what you were saying, yeah. Okay, well, it's do you just don't need to talk there. anymore. I'll just do all the talking. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, that would be, most people would prefer that, I think. <laughs> oh. Not me, not me. Yeah. Uh, no. no, but uh, I mean, so at the end of the day, the stand has kind of stayed where they are, but it is, it's a notch down for UC Irvine, who I don't think really was at large worthy, but this could cost Ooh. them from the 13 line to the 14 line type of thing once the, once the bracket comes out, or maybe 12 to the 13 line. Yeah, uh, and I, I still think they're very 13-ish, but I, I still think that their ceiling is is high. Like, they, they would – they, they could really give a team fits, but it's hard to like, as much as I think that it's hard to substantiate that when they lose to Riverside, I, I mean, good God, what was in the water this week? It was All tough. They, the they get to host Bakersfield. Sleeker, we got a name for this one. No, I couldn't tell you the bake fine. Big five. I'm running out of names for Irvine. The bake eater. The bake eater. The bake eater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, UC Davis is going to be hosting Long Beach and Riverside this week. UC San Diego, again, not eligible for the conference tournament, but still in there and maybe even in contention for a regular season crown here. Uh, they've yeah. got a couple of home games as well this week. Uh, but Dorman over in the Coastal Athletic Association. Where what a jam up we have between yeah. six teams in contention here for the regular season title. Yeah, well, Greg said it a couple of weeks ago. He thought Wilmington was coming on, and they were sitting around the four, the five hole here. But uh, he was correct. Wilmington's on the move here. Uh, uh, Crush Drexel, I believe, last week uh, wasn't really a, a tough game, and then also took Hampton to the woodshed. So uh, they're playing better ball. Um, College of Charleston isn't going anywhere. Uh, Coach Kelsey has really uh, gotten this team back on a better path. Their out of conference wasn't great, but Charleston has seemed to find have found their ways here, and they're looking to stay atop the conference with Wilmington, but Delaware and Drexel and Hofstra sticking right there, even Townsend in the mix here. Uh, big games coming up this weekend, like you said, Chad, because there's six teams within a game at the top of these standings. Yeah, look, look at these games here. We've got – Wilmington is hosting a and and Elon. They should go 2-0. Yeah, Charleston should, yeah. at Northeastern and hosting Bill & Mary. They should go 2-0. But when we get a little bit further down here, we do have Hofstra and Drexel coming up. Uh, we, we've do got, you know, a few others here that, you know, that, that could really impact this thing as we move forward. So there are a lot of interesting games. And I think that this is – I kind of agree with you that I think well, this is Wilmington's conference and or maybe it's a Wilmington-Charleston, but there's just – it's everyone's still so close 12 games into the conference season. Yeah. Housen had a chance and, to get into a three-way tie for first place, but they cost themselves with a loss at home against Delaware. Well, that puts, and what's going to be so Delaware important, right there. <laughs> yeah. Go what's going to be so important is the top four seeds get, get through to the quarters seats five through 10. will have to play around earlier. So th- those top four spots are really coveted. There's going to be a real uh, race to get in the top four here. Yeah, you don't want to be that fifth or sixth place team and have to, have to play that extra game and be tired already going into your quarterfinal exactly. game. Uh, another 14-team conference tournament with that same format we were discussing for the Sun Belt at the top of the show, by the way. Uh, Griggs, Conference USA. Uh, oh. Every time we get oh. on this Louisiana yeah. Tech bandwagon, 
There they go. Now, this was a great game at Liberty, and the students there were crazy. It, 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 if you got a chance to see it, um, they normally are. Uh, uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, but they weren't able to pick up the, pick up the roadwood, and now they are back in a tie with Sam Houston with Western Kentucky it's still there, and this Liberty team uh, lurking in the middle of the pack, kind of. Yeah, uh, I didn't think there would be this much parity in the conference. Uh, Western Kentucky, I. I, I was big on them for a minute, then I lost interest in, but they had a big week, um, you, you know, with the win over Jack State, and then I, well, I guess it was before that when they beat, uh, when, when they beat La Tech, but, um, right. you know, Liberty, all of a sudden, just a game and a half back, we had kind of written them off, uh, and then you start to look at the net and the metrics and uh, th their big win, albeit home over La Tech, has Liberty sort of found themselves now? And are they a factor in this? And look who's in fourth. Uh, the, the the team that we had, you know, that I think we had written off on November the 12th, New Mexico State making a little bit of noise. It is. And, you know, Sam Houston's still in there too. But uh, I, I think it is worth watching. Probably the biggest game this, of this week is, is Liberty. Sorry, Liberty's at Sam Houston. Uh, Liberty yeah. wins this one on the road. They are right back in this conference race, I, I think. Yeah. And, you, you, you know, you look at some of those, you, you know, you look at the BPI, you look at their metrics, and you, you, overall 16 and 9, Liberty might be, they, they may it they may have slept through their alarm. It took them a while to wake up, but they're starting to play more and more like the team that we thought we'd see before the season started. Yeah. The net loves Liberty. Yeah. Yeah, Liberty's uh, where their net ranking is second, is second yeah, to Louisiana yeah. Tech of the conference. Uh, they're almost, as Briggs mentioned, the BPI. They're only two points behind, two teams behind behind uh, Louisiana Tech of the BPI metric. There, that they are on these metrics that they're they're right there with with Louisiana Tech. So uh, I would not be shocked to see these two teams decide the conference tournament title at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> uh, Stalika, over in the Horizon League, uh, we had a bit of an upset tonight, in fact, with, with, with Green Bay with a home loss to Northern Kentucky, uh, while Oakland wins at Fort Wayne. Oakland had also lost to Northern Kentucky on Thursday night, last Thursday night, so NKU kind of coming up here, and both teams are again tied for first, Oakland and, and, and Green Bay. I had conceded last week, probably not going to be the Norris's year, and yet Look what they do here. I mean, it was one thing, okay, you're beating Oakland at home and over time, that's all fine and dandy. But Green Bay, who had been pretty solid, especially after winning at Youngstown State over the weekend, maybe a little bit of a hangover as soon as they got back home here. And Oakland capitalizing with a win at Fort Wayne tonight. So now we suddenly back to a first place tie between the Phoenix and the Golden Grizzlies. Yeah, Green Bay won that game at Youngstown, I believe, on a buzzer beater and had a shot at the buzzer to, to win tonight that did not go in. Uh, uh, Why do you have to do that to the Penguins? And I'm a little surprised that's <laughs> where you started, Chad. Well, I wanted to get through the top of the conference, but let's go now to the <laughs> game of the season. We talked about it. Congratulations to Detroit Mercy, your first D1 win of the season. You beat IUPUI. You crushed IUPUI tonight. Uh, one fan stormed the court. Exactly one yeah. fan. <laughs> was but, it the book guy? Man. It was, well, there was not. Two the, no. <laughs> it was not the Detroit book guy, unfortunately. But he's probably still sitting there reading the book and celebrating. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'd like to congratulate Mike Davis on one of the high watermark wins of his career. This game was prominently featured both as the UTR game of the day by Stalika. And I don't know if you saw our, our uh, you know, daily rundown, but there was a lot of it, a lot about written about this one too. Uh, just a phenomenal game. <laughs> it was an awful game between two awful teams, <laughs> and I watched most of it, so I'll yeah. confess. Uh, but uh, the city of Detroit, I, I think that this takes the sting away from uh, missing the Super Bowl. We, 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 Definitely, <laughs> we give Definitely. an award every yeah. year to the worst team in D one. It's called the Centenary Award. <laughs> in a few minutes, we'll get to the team who's now clearly in the lead for that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and, and it was oh. fun. It, I was actually was listening to the announcers of this game during the last few minutes of the game. They spent a lot of time talking about Detroit versus Mississippi Valley State. So are they very well aware You've of what's going on kidding. there? I'm not. <laughs> I 
was watching, but I wasn't listening like I should have been. Uh, Green Bay is not going to be playing at all in the next seven days. Oakland has a home game against IUPUI, so we may next week's show see uh, see Oakland with a half game lead here. We should at least. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's keep things rolling right along here, Dorman. Over in the Ivy League, um, where the big result was Yale with a nice come from behind win over Cornell. Uh, and you can yeah, ig- ig- ignore this Penn Gallaudet. That that's an error on the screen. <laughs> that was Penn College. It's a D three score that popped up due to some uh, things. So please ignore that that score from today on the screen. <laughs> but go ahead, yell Cornell. That, the, the Bulldogs in the Big Red on Saturday was a fantastic, high quality game. Yale yeah, pulled it out oh, it in great. the end. Uh, but this Ivy League to me, these are this is the strongest three team Ivy. I can never remember, and I really mean that. I really believe Yale, Cornell, and Princeton are really good basketball teams. Uh, we might see some of them pop up later in the top ten, but I, I can't remember a year in the Ivy where there was more than one team that I really liked. Uh, these three teams, it's going to be fantastic. As uh, most of you know, the Ivy is going to bring their top four teams to New York City in March. And uh, as long as I think Princeton is clearly – Top three. So one of these besides Yale, Cornell, Princeton is going to make the final four. And this is going to be a tremendous tournament and open to any of these three. The top seed is really going to be have an advantage because they're going to get to play the four seed while the two and the three really go at battle. Only exception I'll take to what you just said, Dorman, is if that four seed ends up being Columbia. These games will be at Columbia's home court there. So you will be playing a true road game if you are the one seed and Columbia gets that Which is a crazy setup. Fair enough. If they ro- they rotate between each team, so yeah. each- everybody gets their turn. Uh, but they played in the Palestra and in Princeton. They rotate. Yeah, but Princeton was the first place team. So just by but it was by coincidence only. Yeah, they, but it was by a coincidence, this. but it worked out. Uh, I want to take take a quick moment here. Uh, we do po- I do post these podcasts not only on the website, but they're also on my YouTube feed. And every now and then I do get comments on it. And this tell the you truth do? here, I wow. got a comment on the on. On our podcast from just the other night, you, uh, ask, people still uh, go to YouTube. Wow. Yes, they do. Uh, ask about Yale. Yeah, ask about our survival board, actually, Grace. So we have a, it's, it's something on the top there. You want to explain to people what the NCAA tournament survival board is? Well, yes, it, top it, of the it, screen. It, 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 it is. I'll pull it up even while you go ahead. You, you go yeah, ahead and talk. Well, this is what we do this for the selection committee. Um, you, you know, this is a tool that we put together for them, and it basically tells them what teams they need to be looking at. And, you you know, what teams they need to be giving bids to, what teams they need to be debating, and what teams they need to be ignoring. They come to this site or this board, and it tells them all of that. Yep. And uh, I'm I'm trying to get it up. There we go. I got it. I wasn't quite prepared for it. Yeah, right now, 350 teams remain because no one's been eliminated. I mean, there's been teams that have been moved down to the category of needing the auto bid, but no one's been eliminated. Other than Chicago State. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot about okay. that. Uh, but we have teams grouped into various categories of locks. That means they're guaranteed to be like Purdue. No matter what happens, we feel Purdue is going to be in the tournament. Even if they lose all remaining games, yes. Auto bid only. That means the only way to get in is with an auto bid like Michigan. Yeah. And under consideration, that means you still have a shot in that large bid. Uh, either if you're a really good team, you – are gonna you may not make it if you lose all the rest of your games, or if you're yeah. really bad, if you're not that good of a team, if you win every game up to your conference tournament final, you could make it. Down in the Ivy League, this is what I was questioned on. We have both Cornell and Princeton under consideration. We do not have Yale. Uh, mm-hmm. And the question was, why isn't Yale under consideration? But they are, in fact, leading the conference. Cornell and Princeton are not. And I thought it was a really good question. So Great I wanted, question. Wanted, wanted, wanted to bring it up here. So go, let me go back to the other screen here. And see if we can't kind of answer this for this person here. Um, yeah. I forget your name. I apologize. I, I meant to write it down. Well, but I, I, will, I will pull both Cornell and, and Princeton up here. And Greg, can you explain why these two teams may have a shot at an at-large bid should they win every single remaining game up to the Ivy League final? Well, one of the things that jumps out is just a lack of losses below Tier 2 and a bulk of wins. And, and again, I think – in order for either one of these teams to be seriously considered, they would have to do all of that. But I, I'm starting to like Yale on the court more and more. It's just that I think that they had a few too many stumbles out of conference. But I was looking at them, and we might be moving them 
to under consideration. Well, well, let, let's well no, we this, can't. We've already. Well, let's pull yeah. us back over here. I want to pull Yale up here on the left, and 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 this is this is the problem with Yale is what happened on conference. They have something that Princeton and Cornell don't have. That is three losses outside of the top two quadrants. Yeah, and the Weber uh, State he, loss is – you could sort of – but at Rhodey and in Fairfield at home, when, when you have nothing to offset that and they don't, it, it, that's just – that's really going to hurt you in the eyes of the committee. And in terms of remaining on the under-consideration board there, we are projecting you win out. Well, if either Princeton or Cornell wins out every single game, we go back to the standings. Yale will not be in first place. That team will likely be in first place. Yeah. So we are projecting if – Cornella Princeton wins the Ivy League regular season title. But all that being said, Yale's I think, Yale, good. Yale's I think good. Yale's the best team. Yeah, I think, yeah, the, I think they are the too. I think they are too. Uh, their paper isn't the best, but I think on the floor that they are. And keep in mind, this was a team that in October when we did the preseason that we thought would be one of the top under the radar programs. There was every reason to think they would be. They were really good last year. They got everybody back. They've been a little bit disappointing. It took a little while to get their motor going. But since the Ivy League has started, it, it, it isn't that their schedule was, was you, you know, backloaded. They've played everybody. And they beat everybody. Huge and that's game a great this, game coming up. Yeah. I, I mean, huge game Saturday. Yells at yeah, Princeton. I, I think they can win it. I think they can go there and win it. Uh, if well, they do. This is going to be one of ahead. the toughest doubles in all of sport right here. Yes, they go to Princeton <laughs> on Saturday. But they must go to Penn first on Friday, which means it's time for the double. And yeah. Cornell will ha have their shot at the double in a couple weeks as well. Uh, Princeton Friday night, they get Brown at home. A lot easier game the night be day before. Uh, mm. Cornell's two games are Harvard and Dartmouth at home. Uh, look, keep an eye on that Harvard Cornell game on on Friday night, also. Yeah. Um, the let's corn mouth, well. right, Papa? Yeah, the corn yeah. mouth. Yeah, the corn. Salika, let's keep things moving. We're <laughs> running way behind. Metro Atlantic <laughs> Conference, real quick. Your thoughts on, on are you finally on that Quinnipiac bandwagon? Or did this, what happened Saturday throw you off of it? Well, I think that's one of the things that happened. Quinnipiac, they go one and one. Fairfield ends up going zero and or two and zero. So at least they're a game closer, but they're still going to be two back with about another seven to play here. I mean, time is running out, but not impossible for Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac to fall out of the number one seed. Yeah, yeah Dorman, I, I I I don't give up on Quinnipiac for for just that one bad loss. I, I think I think you you had, especially when you had a three game lead of the conference, you had, you had room room to do it. I don't either. We've seen it in all these conferences. It, it's the middle of February. March is right around the corner. The conference season is an absolute grind, and we've seen a lot of uh, teams in the bottom to middle uh, of the standings come up and bite the uh, top two teams. So I, I'm not real concerned. Uh, for Quinnipiac, although I do think this conference tournament will be wide open, even if Quinnipiac does have the top seed. Yep. Uh, Quinnipiac has one game this week. They're going to be hosting Niagara on Sunday. But they Greg, that's not them. the game of the week. It is Friday night. Yeah, one, uh, the, one of the best. No, one of the yeah, um, it's lost some of its shine. Uh, God, this one used to be fun. It's probably going to be lopsided, but it's still going to be fun. Yeah, we, I wish Manhattan would get better. Just so these games would yeah. get a lot better here, but but Manhattan oh, was a always a great game, always yeah. a great rivalry. Yeah, bring um, back Massiello and Clouse for one night. Yes, <laughs> please, please. Uh, here you see the flip side of the Sun Belt Mac Challenge, and there's all that red. Ten out of twelve, uh, plus ten <laughs> out of the twelve games, uh, the Mac, including the top teams here. Uh, but uh, Dorman Akron is still. Oh. In a, in a dominant position in this conference at 10 and one. Yeah, it's their conference uh, to uh, take stronghold here and make a run and uh, finish off uh, and take the top seed. But Toledo's not going anywhere. The Rockets are a solid ball club, play really solid D and they, they have a couple of shooters that I really like. So I don't think Akron's going to uh, run away and hide because I think uh, Toledo will be able to stick around. Um, I do believe they play one more time. If my memory is correct, that should be uh, – I, I believe they play one more time. That would be a great uh, uh, way to – It's Tuesday – coming next Tuesday night, yep, at Toledo. Yeah, so that should be – that'll be uh, whether Akron is going to be in this and pull away or Toledo will stay, you know, right there tied uh, atop the conference lead. 
Uh, this week, Akron is playing Saturday at Buffalo, and then we mentioned that game Tuesday at Toledo. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye on Central Michigan. They're hosting Western Michigan and Bowling Green. They, they've they been hanging in there and it's been an incredible story for a team that, as we mentioned, we expected yeah. nothing out of them this season. Yeah, they have. That has been kind of wild. I still can't believe it. I, I, I got to go back and give a real quick shout out here to the Buffalo Bulls. They've been absolutely awful all season, yet they did get one of the two wins of the Max Sunbelt Challenge this weekend when they had George <laughs> yeah. Southern. That's actually a sign that they had a sense of humor when they were setting up these matchups here to get yeah. like teams in the bottom 25 of the net. Oh, man. Well, that, they, they actually matched them up the top by net rating, the top two, the next best two, the next best two, et cetera. Yeah, um, the years with Nate Oates seem a long time ago. And Bobby uh, Hurley. Yeah, Hurley. Stalika, you want to take a little MIAC talk here where we saw zero conference games over the past seven days? And then there were a couple of non-conference games where Maryland Eastern Shore and South Carolina State were at least trying to get a couple games in. And so Chicago what you State, say, that's going to... What you're saying is that this was an absolutely perfect week for the MIAC. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It was perfect. The first one of the year. That's the first, first one of the week to mention Brian years. Nathan. <laughs> I, I mean, it's rare for any conference to have a perfect week like this. I'm sure it's happened before, but wow. Congrats to the MIAC undefeated this week. Uh, let's look at the upcoming schedule, though. Uh, a little more interesting here. Norfolk State, who is one of our co-leaders, they're going to be hosting South Carolina State. And the big one on Monday night I believe this might be the ESPNU game also, NC Central at Norfolk State. So circle that one on the calendars. And also watch NC Central and Howard on Saturday as well. Uh, we'll talk a little more MIAC next week when there's, when there's actually games to discuss. But Chris, <laughs> yeah. how, how about the Missouri Valley Conference? Oh, man. Uh, where, once again, as we said earlier, welcome back, Indiana State. I don't care. It says, it says you're the top 25. You're under the radar. Well, yeah. And, and let's look. I mean, I, I kind of hate it for them that their moment uh, was sort of crapped on. Uh, sort of. Here, here it is. Way <laughs> down there, quad four. We're going to scroll um, out and find it. Wow. Just how di- I, I still think I, I, I know that the immediate reaction was, well, now, I mean, they, they have no shot at getting inside the bubble. I don't oh, think no. that's true. I, no, I, I, no, in no, fact, no, I, no. Yeah. I, I still think they are inside the bubble, maybe not in the top half of the bracket, but um, it, it did really set them back. And, and God, they'd had a great year uh, up until this point. Josh Scheitz, am I saying that correctly? Shirts. Shirts. Yeah. Shirts. Shirts. Josh Shirts, excuse me. Uh, just a phenomenal coach. One of the better coaching jobs of the year. I know that the timing of this is bad to say that, but uh I, I'm still a believer in the trees. I think they're a really good team that, like a lot of teams, for whatever reason, had a really bad night. Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't. I think while we are kind of, de- you know, slapping them around a little bit, I think they're out of the top twenty-five polls. But Dorman, I think this is this team can still lose anywhere in Arch Madness in the Missouri Valley Tournament, even the quarterfinal round, and be in the field of sixty-eight. I am absolutely in agreement with that. I think this team is fantastic. If you watch them play, and I know I'm an eye test guy, I think they play tremendous basketball. Greg said it. Coach Schertz is absolutely awesome. Um, and everyone's saying, oh, there there goes. They have to get the auto bid. I'm, I'm with you, uh, Chad. This team will be just fine. They will uh, find their way probably in uh, Carbondale on Saturday night against Southern Illinois and get back to their winning ways. And I think the Sycamores will be just fine and ready for March Madness. Uh, and Sleek, I do have Drake up on the right there. They picked up a real nice road win at, at Bradley, it's clearly the third best team in this conference. They do have Bradley again. They may have a most slightly more interesting profile under the hypothetical that they win all five of these remaining regular season games, including Bradley home 10 the season, and get to a game against Indiana State in the conference tournament final and lose it. It was good for their profile that they were able to add the uh, quad one win with the game at Bradley, but I think the far more intriguing game, especially if, if you saw the ending, was their game at Evansville <laughs> where Drake managed to give up a pair of uh, – Three pointers in the closing seconds, yet on the ensuing possession, depending on who you believe, were able to get off the uh, game winning three themselves with under a second remaining. Now, now, now he, here was the scenario, and I believe the officials yeah. got this right at the end of the day. Uh, Evansville had the ball, they were coming down the court, 
somebody at Evansville was trying to call timeout. The player had already thrown the shot up. While the ball was in in the midair, the official blew the re- blew the whistle on the timeout call, and the clock stopped. The shot went in. The officials, I think, correctly ruled, number one, that the shot counts. It was already in the air. And number two, that the clock should have kept running in the game when it should have ended. So I think the officials got it right after about a 15-minute replay review. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but but it you know it was just it, it was a little bit chaotic. I know Evansville fans are very upset about how it ended. Yeah, um, it, it was and, just and, a crazily. It was just a deliciously crazy ending. Go back and watch it, and, and a nice road win for. But the but to, don't listen to the announcers because they spent the entire time thinking that there was a technical being called on somebody, and which made things worse, not better for Evansville yeah. fans that yeah. were watching. They, they 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 just didn't understand what was going on at all, unfortunately. And that may be on the officials for not explaining it to the announcers that are standing there also. Yeah, what they were looking at. Uh, upcoming games this week in the Valley. Uh, as we record this, um, Missouri State has just finished off the win at Murray State, but Saturday, Indiana State at Southern Illinois, and That's then at Valpo win. Wednesday. Yeah. And meanwhile, meanwhile, Drake is hosting Murray State and Belmont. Uh, those are the, probably the key games. Yeah. Uh, Dorman, over in the Northeast Conference, our feature conference from last week, uh, where Central Connecticut had a nice two and zero week, as did Merrimack. Yeah, pulling, uh, they're pulling away. It's going to be one of these two that takes the title. The other take will take the two seed. Uh, I think this is a battle that's going to go right down to the last weekend. I think both teams are playing good basketball, and when they don't run into each other, I don't really see them uh, taking too many losses here. Um, so I think uh, there'll be a fantastic uh, two team finish here in the Northeast between yeah. uh, CCU and Merrimack. Yeah, let's pull up both the pages here, just mainly so we can see what they have left. I know that it larges are out the window. I, I think that <laughs> really, really? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so you don't think either one of these teams <laughs> yeah. getting an at large grade? I just want to make sure we get that on record. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of interesting now because they've already played each other twice, and I believe they they've, split. They've, and, they uh, both correct. won at home. Yeah. yeah, and this is important because this conference, uh, it, it, they do the tournament at campus sites. And the difference between one and two is huge because it means who's going to get to be hosting. And if they both, so every game has that pivotal feel because you want to be that first place team. And if they both went out, I I, I don't know who has the tiebreaker. I can't. Well, well, the other the other loss by both teams was Merrimack, a home loss to Wagner, Central Connecticut, a home loss to Lemoyne. If we go by that standings thing, uh, I would think Central Connecticut because they. Beat beat Sacred Heart. Yeah, because they it's beat, beat Wagner twice. But, higher in the standings, yeah. but again, but there is still five more games to go for each of these teams before we get there that yeah. they have to go even in uh, for that to happen. Uh, but this week, at least, Central Connecticut is at Le- Lemoyne, while um, Merrimack is at Stonehill and then hosting Long Island. So that's the games to at least yeah. pay attention to in the Northeast. Uh, but Salika, over in the Ohio Valley Conference, talk about teams on a roll. Uh, this, this Moorhead State team up to 20 wins overall, uh, seven wins in a row right now since they lost at Edwardsville. I feel like Moorhead couldn't get in their game quickly enough because if you saw the end of the game Thursday night, it was apparently lights out at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that, they had to have been on a timer there. It felt like I was at summer camp just seeing the lights go out like no, that. No, no. Yeah, on national TV too, but but yeah. but but seriously, this Moorhead State team though, uh, they took care of Edwardsville, they took care of Eastern Illinois. Uh, coming up this week, they've got uh, a road game tomorrow night at Little Rock, and then a road game at Tennessee Martin. But uh, Dorman, I, I just think that this team is, and then Tuesday they, they host Southern Indiana, by the way. But I just think this team is it's looking so good right now. They're head and shoulders above any team in this league. All they do is win year in and year out. This year is no different. They are going to run away with this conference. They will be the one seed in Evansville, Indiana, come March. And I don't see an upset happening in the conference tournament like like we saw last year. I I really, I I I think they're they were while they were the top seed last year. I don't think they were this head and shoulders over everybody else last season. I'm Um, with you. This I think they roll. Griggs, talk about teams that are rolling. Colgate is now twelve and one in conference play since since we since we gave up on them. <laughs> yeah, and um, Lafayette. Uh, I mean, we uh, loved the, it, but... they got they they went yeah. 
they, they got their butts kicked tonight at home by yeah. Loyola, Maryland. At the last so it's, you know, Colgate's running downhill, which is sort of what we were expecting coming into the year. In fact, when they did lose the one game to Lafayette, we were kind of stunned. Uh, all seems right with the or, or I, all seems as it should be in the Patriot League with Colgate sort of blowing through it. I it, when you look at any metric, there's nobody near them. It, it's just I, I think they blow through the rest of it all the way to the championship game. Quick shout out over the weekend. Uh, two of the best rivalries in this conference were played. Lehigh Lafayette yeah. is a great rivalry. That game went double overtime. Army Navy went overtime as well. So putting aside Colgate. This is a really fun conference this season. It's a fun weekend, yeah. And, and uh, I think other than th- Colgate's three games in the conference tournament, it's going to be a real fun conference tournament. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, of course, it's other than the three games that Colgate's going to win to get back to the NCAA tournament. Right. Um, on, their, on their home court. Right. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Dorman, over in the – oh, it did not come – oh, wait. Hey, oh, here's the upcoming schedule, first of all. Colgate this week is going to be – Hosting Bucknell then at Lafayette on Monday. That's trying to get revenge for the one conference loss of the season. Yeah, so, I, I think they might do it. I, I think they have it in them. As we record this right now over in the SoCon, Samford has a lead early in the second half by about eight points over Western Carolina. A big game that's going on right now. Yeah, not uh, sure what's going on, but the refs have been at the monitor for seemingly 10 minutes now. Well, of course, because <laughs> they wanted to watch the game also. Uh, right. But... Uh, right. um, Dorman, how about the Samford team, who, which is just, you know, had what what a week they had. They, they they beat Chattanooga last week. Now they win at UNC Greensboro this week on Thursday, followed up with a win at VMI. I love this Samford team. I think these Bulldogs are, are fantastic. They push the ball. They put a tremendous amount of pressure on your defense. And if you don't get right back, they're hitting short jump shots or layups. And they just, I love the way this team plays. I really do. I think Sanford is the class of this conference. I would love to see this team in uh, the, in the tournament uh, come March, because I'd love to see this offense put a, put some pressure on uh, one of the power boys, because I really think this team can play Sanford. I really do. Uh, Coach McMillan has done a tremendous job. I know he hasn't been there that long, but he's, his system is really in now. He has his kids in there, his recruits. Uh, you can see it there. It's his fourth season. And I just love the way this team plays basketball. I love these Bulldogs. And this is a sleek, sleek. This is going to be a fascinating story if something does happen in the SoCon tournament. If this team literally wins every remaining game until the SoCon finals, they can be 30 and four. And with only a one real bad loss at the moment, and that's going to be at Furman, which is going to be in tier three. However, if they do have a slip up, depending on who does it in the uh, SoCon tournament, it would probably add another tier three loss, which would make things a little bit iffy for the Bulldogs here. Yeah, it would probably it would be a neutral court loss, and there's nobody, and everybody is sub 100, which means that would be a tier three loss. So it would be two tier three losses, but uh, it would be the most losses ever by a team that got left out of the NCAA tournament if it happened. Uh, Least amount. Can they get there? Uh, Ty mo- tells most losses. By, yeah, yeah. Tell Ty tell the other night indicated that he thought they could. Um, the one thing is, and I keep getting back to this. Last year's Charleston team, 31 wins, seated below the first four. Uh, it. I think this Sanford team's a little better than that. I think this conference is a little better than that. It's really hard to do what they're doing in this league. I would hate if for them to win out and not be selected if they didn't win the conference tournament. Their style of play is almost it is as fun as as exciting as it is. It it's also prone to uh, get out of control. They 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 like to get a shot up in, within about eight seconds. I think they just run up and down the floor, but. God, they're fun to watch, and man, they are good. They are good. Uh, there they go. They play, as we mentioned, they're playing, and they're now up double digits on on Western Carolina. Uh, they've gone on a run as we've been recording this. Uh, they're at Mercer Saturday, hosting Furman, trying to get revenge for that conference loss on Wednesday. Uh, Salika, over in the Southland Conference, McNeese State did find a way finally to get a 2-0 week and, and do what they were supposed to be doing after the head scratcher to southeastern Louisiana a couple weeks ago. This time they also had a little bit more breathing room against uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi in the rematch. So here they end up winning by seven and basically a laugher against uh, Houston Christian on uh, <laughs> Monday night. But as far as Nichols State, they also lost whatever 
realistic chance they could have had of getting the number one seed themselves and now being two games back of McNeese. Now it's going to be the Cowboys getting the top seed in all likelihood. Yeah, I don't see any way McNeese is not the top seed. The real battle, this is a ladder format with the top two seeds getting buys of the semis, is that battle for that two seed to see who gets to at least avoid McNeese until the, <laughs> until the finals and yeah. and get and only have to play one game to get to those finals. So uh, McNe- Nichols currently in the lead for that. This week's games, McNeese is at Nichols on Saturday, so that could knock Nichols back down into the, into the pack, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh Dorman, over in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. First of all, let's congratulate Mississippi Valley, the clear front runner now for the for the worst team in D one. <laughs> uh, after an 0 two week, they gave Jackson State a battle on Saturday, but were not able to find a way Who's to win. Who's behind them? They're three sixty two. Who's worse than them and than that? There's only three hundred sixty two teams in Division one. Oh, I thought okay, I thought it was three sixty three. My bad. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Yeah, Dorman. I like the Jack. I like the Jaguars. I really like. I think the Southern team has gotten better as the season goes has gone on. Uh, they're a game ahead of Grambling. That's going to be a tight two team race uh, to the finish. But uh, like you just said, Cookman and Texas Southern only really a game behind uh, Grambling. Um, but I think the Jaguars have actually the best basketball team in oh, the yeah. conference, and I oh, think yeah. they're really starting to come on. And I think you're going to see them uh, really maybe push out here and get a little uh, distance between the rest because I think they're the class of this conference. And I really think they'll be the one seed uh, come uh, tournament time. And I think they're going to Birmingham, Alabama this year. Yes. The tournament tournament is in Birmingham, top eight teams advanced. So Mississippi Valley will not have a chance in the conference tournament to to pick up that first win. They got to do it regular season. Uh, Um, It was also a costly, I was going to say it was a costly week for a grambling because they lost a chance to remain in a, First place tie with the home loss against Alabama A and M. Yeah, that was yeah. a bad loss. But Bethune Cookman, this team's been playing really well lately. Pair of home wins, but one of them is over Texas Southern, the other one over Prairie View. So they were this pair of solid home wins by SWAC standards too. Mm-hmm. Do not do not sleep on this Cookman team. That's all I gotta say. You're right. And what a fun storyline, Grambling and Southern, sort of the one two here. They they do face each other again before the end of the year and God, what if they? What if we get the rubber match in March twenty? March twenty. That would be fantastic yeah. <laughs> if they played for the bid on the line after what these two programs yeah. have gone through. That I'm with Greg. Fantastic. Southern's at Prairie View and at Texas Southern Monday. Uh, Grambling's at Texas Southern. So they both got to play at Texas Southern this week and at Prairie View. They are uh, trial yeah, partners. Trial partners. Uh, uh, let's go over what's up next. How about the Summit League, Griggs, where uh, yeah, I I mean we still got to discuss this conference. It is one of them, but uh, South Dakota State did win their one game this week. They beat Oral Roberts. Yeah, um, I, I just don't know. I I'm so glad they put this conference behind a paywall and that I paid for it. Th- thank you for that. <laughs> uh, you, you know, debut year. Um, if you ask me who I think the least bad team is, I'm still going to go with South Dakota State. I'm going to say Thomas, but that's a yeah. different story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with North Dakota. Yeah, North, North Dakota. Dakota. Yeah, but they've but, been but coming Dorman, on. They have. Did, did you see what happened on Saturday when they <laughs> lost by almost 20 points at home to Kansas City? <laughs> Kansas, the ruse are really coming on, though, Chad. Yeah. Well, Kansas City had a. That was the <laughs> best, the best thing that happened this weekend in the city of Kansas City. Way better. Yeah, I mean, they were sir. jacked. Did you see yeah. that city this weekend? <laughs> Um, over here in the upcoming game, South Dakota State is at Kansas City coming up here on Thursday night and then at Omaha. Those are probably the two games to circle for this week, at least at this point. Uh, yeah. But um, one last conference here, Sleeka, over in the Western Athletic Conference, where the Lopes continue to roll. Only two losses on the season, and I think we really got to discuss what are their at-large chances. Should oh, they be able to keep winning here? I, I think, think it's getting scary in the Grand Canyon, probably getting closer to the top 25 themselves. We can only pray yeah. they don't suffer the same fate that Indiana State did as soon as they cracked the rankings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah they, but, but this Grand Canyon team, won again, they've got Utah Tech, tomorrow california baptist over the weekend both at home i have the one game left to really circle is is the 22nd at tarleton this tarleton team 
is a live team. They are the second place team, and they've played like the second best team in the conference, I think. Yeah, which is kind of crazy since they're a transitional team. I mean, they haven't looked anywhere near as good as the Lopes have, but that if they're that, I agree with you that that's their toughest remaining game. I, I think Grand Canyon is good enough to win out. I, I think they will, and they may win out all the way through to the conference tournament. Which and then where are they? The nine line, the ten line. I mean, mm-hmm. it, they're pretty good. And if you look at their overall profile, I know that we just had it up there a second ago. There's some decent stuff on it you know the win at liberty who we talked about coming on strong uh they had to sweat out san francisco i you can't exactly look at that and say it was a dominant performance but that's a, a lot of good road team. wins there yeah it's and, a good team yeah south carolina who's not exactly playing well at the moment but is still ranked <laughs> exceptionally high they were right in that game so this is a lobes team that is not just you, you, you know collecting pennies and nickels and building up their fortune that way this team can play and and this is a team that can go maybe beyond the round of 64 i agree with you completely um we'll see what they do see if they get these two home wins first this week let's uh, take one game at a time here with them a quick note this the whack tournament has switched to a ladder format this year so assuming they get the one or the two seed they will get a bye to the semifinals as well so yeah only two games to make the make the NCAA tournament uh Chicago State, oh, rough 0 and 2 week. The losses at South Carolina State and Eastern Kentucky. They are alone independent. And I got a little bit of sad news for you guys. Coming up Monday afternoon, 2 o'clock Eastern start, they're going to be hosting non D1 IU Northwest. It is their final scheduled game of the entire season. Uh, yeah. This could be it for Chicago State. And the it and this could be the end of our last independent we have for quite a while. They are off to the uh, Northeast Conference next year. I, I still want my Northeast Conference bonus game against the ninth place team that does not make the tournament. I want a double. Let's check out some some of our uh, real quickly through, through our mythical conferences. Start in the uh, Beehive Conference. Uh, <laughs> Where Utah continues to dominate three and zero. Utah Tech got the win over Southern Utah this week, though we actually had a little bit of beehive action. But Utah yeah. looking really good. Did we decide we, we that 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 postseason games will count in this though? I I think we did. Yeah. Okay. So so there's still a chance if Utah loses, if Utah could be match up one of these teams. They could potentially play BYU even in the NCAA tournament. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, my God, would the state survive? Utah Valley at Southern Utah on Saturday. That's a little beehive action, a little middle of the pack here, but uh. You know, Utah Valley trying to stay uh, stay in third place there. Uh, the Front Range Conference. Woo-hoo, we love the Front Range. Wyoming sitting here 2-0 and in place for the automatic bid out of the Front Range. That That is crazy to me that they'd be ahead of Colorado State, but th- there they are. I mean, th- that's pretty incredible. Uh, no actual games in, in the Front Range this week, though. It's, we got to get some more Front Range action. The Back yeah. Range. Down in Arizona, New Mexico, a UTEP big win over New Mexico State. To, yeah, moving to move into third place. The standings there. Uh, yeah, just a, a game behind New Mexico in first place. And how about this huge game on Saturday? Arizona State, Arizona. Both teams yeah. finally getting in, in, in the action, under action here in the back range. Yeah, a conference opener, kind of late for that, for a mythical conference mm-hmm. opener. Well, I have another team that hasn't started a conference is Gonzaga over right in the top range, but Eastern Washington beat, did beat Idaho this week, which helped push Gonzaga down to fifth place. So shame on you, Mark. <laughs> right, yeah. They might have won at Kentucky, but they are no good in the top range. Right. Uh, upcoming this week, do we have some action? We do. We've got Idaho State, Eastern Washington. Oh, man, huge Montana. Top, Montana, State, Montana Idaho State, Idaho. Those are two of our biggest top ooh, range ooh. rivalries. Wow, yeah. Looking uh, wild. Uh, the top 10. Yeah. Here's our Hoops HD top 10. Uh, the four of us, as well as Rocco Miller, all voted this week here. Some honorable mentions seems that did not quite make the top 10. Votes went to Bradley, Cornell, Akron, Wilmington, and prior to the loss tonight, High Point. Got a prior little to the, They'd probably yeah. be going if not for that. But number 10, we have UC Irvine, the Eaters. Still hanging the around. Yeah, yeah, good team. At number nine, it was Yale. We mentioned Yale. Yeah. Look at them in the top yeah. ten. Yeah, in the top ten. And again, I think a lot of us aren't voting by the paper. We're voting by what they see on the court to get back to the earlier question. But but uh, maybe but then, we are uh, looking for the paper because yeah. Princeton actually snuck ahead of them. Oh wow! Snuck back up. Uh, Princeton had fallen down a little bit. Uh, 
sneaking back up this week just uh, on the basis that, that, hey, let's see what happens this weekend, too. If Princeton beats Yale, they definitely belong above them. Yeah. Uh, at number seven. Yes, yep. there they are. <laughs> <laughs> we have two way tie for fifth place between James Madison, who snuck ahead of App State, and Drake out of the, uh, our second uh, Missouri Valley Conference we've mentioned already. Yeah. At number four, it was McNeese State. Re- yeah, really good. Number three, Samford, uh, mm-hmm. currently dominating this game yeah. over, over Western Carolina. And dominating the SOCON in a way that it hasn't been. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. It's been dominated by teams before. <laughs> I feel like number, number two does, well, deserves a drum roll this week. <laughs> number two is Grand Canyon. The Antelopes are there. And number one, drum roll. They shouldn't have even been on the list. Yeah. But we brought them back. The Indiana State Sycamores are our number one under the radar team. We're not giving up on them by any means. Yeah. Of the loss. We just bring, bring them back under the radar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go to final thoughts here. Stalika. Let's go back to the uh, Mac and the uh, Sun Belt scores for a moment. We already gave you one example as to uh, the schedule makers having a sense of humor with uh, Buffalo and uh, Georgia Southern getting matched up. I would also like to point out, at least for Xavier fans, a nice little Easter egg between Georgia State and uh, Mother Miami here. (laughs) So this would be Xavier interim coach. uh, Oh, I'm blanking on the name. Jonas Hayes getting the win over uh, Travis Steele's team here on Saturday. So at least that put a little bit of a smile on our faces Saturday while our team was losing at home against Creighton. Yeah, uh, There you go. Save your fans a little bit of something. Dorman. Some under-the-radar teams we discussed tonight that are going to be live to win a game or two. Uh, these, to me, I'm going to give you some teams – are all live to win at least one game. Some I even think can play in the Sweet 16. I think they're that good. And uh, our power schools are really not going to be happy when they see these teams in their bracket because these teams are really good. Uh, The Ivy League, whether it's Yale, Cornell, or Princeton, Vermont, again, dangerous. Eastern Washington, all of us like. The Eaters, UC Irvine, uh, out of the Valley, Indiana State, or Drake. Akron out of the MAC. Samford, who I love. McNeese. James Madison, Grand Canyon, these teams, uh, uh, not only are uh, one or two of these, a bunch of these teams will win in the first round. They are really, really talented and uh, will give the power schools all they can handle. I'll throw in more at you. You mentioned those Valley teams, a team we didn't really discuss much. I think if Bradley somehow steals that auto bid, they are just as dangerous. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Griggs. Um, I, I don't want to pick on the eight Atlantic 10. First of all, it's not under the radar too much, but going back to our top 10, when you look at basically the top five teams, and I'm thinking App State, JMU, Samford, Indiana State, and um, Grand Canyon, I, I can't see foresee any five of those, and, and I know that this is just a supposition, finishing any worse than second or third in the A-10, and they may all actually win it. And part of the reason... That I, I, I think part of the reason these teams aren't being more valued is because of their paper and their circumstance. And if they had a, a bit of a tougher conference, their paper would look better and we're not even considering them to be on the bubble. They would just be safely in it. So I know that the committee can't really look at it that way, but it's, it's something to think about. Uh, who would you rather play? Uh, you, you know, the second or third place team from the A-10 or any of those five? I know who I would rather play. Uh, I'd rather play anybody because it means I'm in the tournament. But well, true. on that note, uh, I do want to thank everyone for joining us. On behalf of David Dorman, David Griggs, John Stel- David Griggs there, John Sleek over there. I'm Ooh. Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We will be back again tomorrow night with a Bracket Rundown show. Talk to you again real soon. <laughs>